All right. I'm good. I need protein. All right. I Finally. Need, I need protein. <laughs> I need protein. All right. Welcome back to Snatches and Scotch. We're here with Ashley Smith. Uh, we had a really good time today uh, with a nice little workout, and she wanted to do another one. She's nuts. Um, <laughs> Ashley, uh, she has always been to fitness. She's told me she's played sports her whole life. She's done some kind of fitness modeling. Uh, she's uh, been into CrossFit for quite a while. She's gone to regionals. Uh, she's a gym owner, a trainer, uh, a fit aid athlete. <laughs> That's her right there. <laughs> Overall badass, and she loves her dog Nova. Very true. Yes. All right. So, how did you get into fit? How did you find CrossFit, or, or how did you get into fitness? Uh, well, I started fitness uh, in high school, actually. Uh, one of the uh, fitness coaches and uh, teachers there was actually asking me to be a cheerleader, and uh, there was no way I was ever doing that. Uh, I've played hockey <laughs> since I was four, and the last thing on my mind was cheerleading. Uh, but after I said that, she talked to me a little bit about uh, joining into her, you know, high fit classes, uh, where we actually did a lot of CrossFit type of movements yeah. back then. Uh, I also got into rugby through her. Uh, I played on the soccer team, uh, volleyball, and hockey. I ended up just focusing on hockey after uh, grade 10. So it was for grade 11 and 12, I just focused on hockey. Um, but yeah, pretty much been in fitness my whole life. Got into police foundations uh, for college. Cool. And we had to stay fit for that, obviously, even though most of the cops you see around here don't look like they <laughs> do fitness. Um, you're supposed to. So I, I kept fit with that for a little while. And uh, I got into CrossFit two years ago, actually, last month. It was my two year anniversary for CrossFit. Wow. Um, so wait, you went to regionals your first year of CrossFit? Yes, it was actually the what weekend the of my one year anniversary was uh, regionals. That's awesome. Yeah, it was intense and very terrifying. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, but since then, obviously never looked back. Yeah, that's awesome. So what, what have you been up to lately? I've seen a bunch of really cool things happening. You went to Mexico. Yes, I, uh, I got asked by uh, Joel Hernandez, who is now, as of recently, one of the part owners of CrossFit Merida in Mexico. Um, and he contacted me uh, last year and asked if I would be interested in coming to teach a gymnastics and Olympic weightlifting seminar. Cool. Obviously, I said yes. I would yeah. love that opportunity. Uh, so he and I planned everything, came up with a good uh, program. I went down uh, the end of May this year, and I taught uh, Olympic weightlifting all day on Saturday and did a gymnastics seminar on Sunday for a group of 24 people. That's cool. So it was amazing. The people there were absolutely incredible, very, very welcoming. They welcomed me into their gym, of course, but also into their homes, yeah. their own personal homes. I didn't have to stay at That's a hotel. That's so cool. They were fantastic. It was amazing. That, that's the thing about the CrossFit community. Any, anytime you go anywhere, everyone's so cool. Everyone's so friendly. And it's funny because you walk into a gym like this, and <clears throat> it's a nice gym, uh, grungy walls. There's really loud music playing in the background. Everyone's lifting heavy weights. And you walk in, and you're, like, really intimidated and, and, and a little scared. Uh, you see guys are jacked with their shirts off and, you know, girls lifting weights heavier than probably you can <laughs> as a dude. Uh, and... But when you talk to people in the CrossFit community, everyone's super nice. Super nice. Exactly. Like, it, it seems very intimidating, but it's not. Yeah. So, like, the other, um, when we were at uh, Collingwood uh, a few a few uh, weeks ago, my wife and I, and uh, we dropped into CrossFit Industries just because we wanted to get a workout in. We were on, like, a little getaway from the kids. And we walked in, and I'll be honest, like, I was a little intimidated. It was a big gym. Uh, didn't know anybody from Industries. I walked in, and I introduced myself, and... I think Dylan was there. Uh, he's part owner of Industries, and uh, he's just like, "Oh hell yeah! Just whatever you want in the gym, it's yours. Go work out." I'm like, what? Really? Yeah. And I mean, I do the same thing with people out of town, but I don't really expect that when I go to other CrossFit gyms. And every gym I've been to is like super, super cool. Everyone's so friendly. Yeah. That's I was awesome. Just saying that to somebody yesterday, actually. Um, just how I went to Montreal this past week. Yeah. Uh, I got to train with super badass Erica Latondra yeah. and uh, my coach, Karim. So he is part owner of Pro One. Yep. Uh, who's they, going they killed to games it. this year. Yeah. This year. Well, they this killed week. it at regionals, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They came first place. So fuck yeah, Pro One. Uh, <laughs> so they're going. Um, but they welcomed me in and I thought to myself, I can almost go anywhere in the world. 
yeah. and just be welcomed into a gym to work out. And I've thankfully only ever one time have I had to pay for a hotel. Uh, and that's when I was doing uh, hyperfit training in Michigan. Yeah, yeah. Um, I stayed at a hotel there, but in Mexico, they welcomed me. Uh, Montreal, again, they welcomed me. I stayed at my coach's house one night. I stayed at Erica's house another night. Awesome. And I thought, like, where else can you do that? My dad's always like, be careful. Yeah. You never know. These people are crazy. I'm like, Dad, they're CrossFitters. They're fine. They're crossfit. it's okay. <laughs> CrossFitters aren't crazy. Exactly. Not even a little bit. No. They're crazy in the gym. That's it. So, yeah. Yeah. It's it's. Unique. That's so cool. It's so awesome. Yeah. yeah. And that's the thing too. Like with this podcast, like I basically just called a bunch of people and said, "Hey, you want to be on the podcast?" Yeah. And they're just like, "Oh, okay, cool." Yeah. And I'm like, "Really? Really? Why? Why? <laughs> Why? Cool. It's neat." I'm like, "All right, that's awesome." Yeah. Oh, that's that's so cool. Yeah. So that's 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 definitely a. a the thing with the CrossFit community, that's what attracts a lot of people to CrossFit as well. The, the more immersed they get into it, the more they love it, right? Yeah. Um, so you thinking of doing your own seminar one of these days? Running your own kind of like seminar series? like yeah. Kind of like an Andrea Ager deal? Yes. A li- I'm a little less intense than Andrea She's very Ager. intense, eh? She's like... She smiles a lot for an intense ooh, person. She really does, yeah. yes. But I'm, uh, I'm not as crazy as she is. Yeah. Um, I am going back to Mexico at the end of January, beginning of February to do a three-day seminar. And uh, I've been talking with Andre Sutherland, who is, uh, again, faster rep in Costa Rica. Yeah. Uh, talking about going to Costa Rica to do a seminar uh, later this year. Cool. So hopefully it will become, you know, a, a side thing uh, with CrossFit to be able to travel and teach. Yeah. I would, you know. That's amazing. I wouldn't love to be able to do that. And I, I am doing it. I mean, it's only been once, but it's still an experience and something that I can say, you know what, I've had the opportunity yeah. to do this and i feel like most people who get into crossfit uh coaching crossfit uh particularly they do it because they want to help people right mm-hmm. and and if you can run a seminar and help more people then why not yeah. that's 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 why i want to do this i want to help as many people giving people as much information as possible uh to kind of like help athletes and coaches right yeah. so like my whole thing is eventually i'd love to kind of help coaches get better yeah you know what i mean um and uh develop programs for coaches to get better but like seminars are like that's amazing it is you, that's so cool again just like coaching and, and obviously you know this too but being able to see people on day one you know they're intimidated they're nervous they're anxious yeah and you know by the end of either you know three months or six months in class or by the end of a two or three day seminar you see the progress and it's awesome because you're like i helped that yeah you know, i help those people get to you know the point where they're celebrating something they're and they no love you for it <laughs> exactly. like i know yeah. i know that when when i started crossfit people who gave me like little cues i didn't even know them and they gave me like two little cues and my snatches felt so much better yeah and i'm like i knew i was strong but it just i wasn't doing it right and and then i was like very loyal to those people because i'm like that guy helped me out you know what i mean yeah yeah for sure um so earlier on, we were talking about girls and CrossFit, and we had some pretty good conversations, like kind of just lifting weights and talking. Um, but uh, the reason I wanted to do this with you is because you're a very pretty girl, and you're thank very you. <laughs> thank you, <laughs> and and you're very very strong, and you're also very athletic. So, what's the issue with women in CrossFit? Honestly, from my experience, and I even felt it within the first few months that I was doing CrossFit. You get this uh, adrenaline because you're doing things you never thought you could do. Yeah. And it's an amazing feeling. It's very empowering. It's very motivating and inspiring to see other girls do this stuff. You know, like two weeks after or a week after I started CrossFit, I went and watched Regionals 2012 and was like, holy yeah. shit. <laughs> yeah. I want to do this. I want to be here. One day I want to be here. And yeah. then you start doing it. You feel great. But then all of a sudden... You know, being a girl in, in this society these days kicks in and you look at the scale and you're like, fuck. I just gained 15 pounds. The first three months I did CrossFit, yeah. I gained 13 pounds. And yeah. I started panicking. I was like, well, shit, but I feel good, but I'm all of a sudden 135 pounds, which... And you're not tall either. How tall are you? I'm exactly five feet. I'm a oh, Okay, yeah. You know, and yeah. it's an extra five pounds you feel like yeah. that. Never mind 15 or 13, whatever. Since I've started CrossFit now... I think I'm, I think I'm about 135 pounds, give or take a pound or two. But yeah. I barely ever weigh myself anymore. Yeah, um, I, I think I think most people who do CrossFit just stop weighing themselves yeah, up for a while. Exactly, unless you're doing a weightlifting meet, you don't really need to. Yeah, unless you're, yeah, you feel. that's right. But yeah. I think for for the majority of girls, it's 
they want to be able to do those things, but they also want to be able to be tiny. They want yeah. to have the abs. They don't want to. They want, don't want to have the bulk. And mm-hmm. for me, I have always been a bulky girl. Like I have a photo of me when I was ten. I'm wearing a Mickey Mouse badass bathing suit <laughs> and Nike shorts, and I have my arms crossed, and I yeah. have big arms and big legs. And yeah. People are like, oh, so you've always been like this. Well, yeah, I've been playing hockey since I was yeah. four. Soccer, soccer, soccer legs. My dad, I have my dad's body, on, unfortunately. But, yeah. Um, yeah, most girls look at that. Like I, I was saying to you earlier, I had a particular person come to me for nutrition. Mm-hmm. And they were like, I never want to look like you. No offense, great for what you could do, but I never want to look like you. And What a bitch. I thought, <laughs> well, fuck you. But at the same time, you know, it takes a lot to get to this point. And that's yeah. why, like, a lot of people will see athletes like Julie Fouché and Michelle Latondra and, you know, Telena Fortunato, for example. And they're like, I never want to look like that girl, but I want to do what she does. They're, like, jacked and ripped. and exactly. But they don't understand these people have been working for years. years. And not only, yeah. not only have they been working for years, but they... they they're working at 100% for years. Exactly. Their sleep, their recovery, their nutrition, yeah. their diet. Like, everything they do is for that goal. Exactly. Most people just do CrossFit because they want to be in shape and kind of look yes. good. Healthy, fit. And, and yes, CrossFit will get you there. It will get you healthy. will get you fit. You'll have a blast doing it. Yeah. Un- unlike most conventional gyms, not to bash anything else because, again, as long as you're doing something, it's fantastic. But yeah. you get the community here. And you, yeah. you're never going to find that anywhere else. But... You can't, you can't just walk into a gym just like I think it was Rich Froning said. You can't just all of a sudden start basketball one day and be like, I'm going to the NBA tomorrow. Yeah, you, know, yeah, you have to put in the work. work that you way. have to put in the time. And these girls, like I said, they've got nutrition coaches, weightlifting coaches, endurance coaches, gymnastics coaches. They've got a whole freaking team yeah. that's putting them together like that. And then you have the other side of the, the, the equation, the people who come in and say, well, if... If I didn't have a job and I didn't have kids, I could be Rich Froning. I could be Julie Fouché. Yeah. Well, look at Val Bullshit. Vobril. Right? Val Vobril has She's got kids. kids. She's a full-time teacher. Yep. She dedicates one day an hour, five days a week. And she, and she kills it. it. Yeah. Exactly. So there's really no excuses. Yeah. It's, you get out of it. It takes a special exactly person. It takes a special person to be an athlete. Like, you can't just wake up one day and be like, um, I'm going to be an athlete today. Yeah. Like, I mean... People who do CrossFit all generally become athletic, and they're all we call them all athletes. But to be a competitive athlete, it it takes a very very special person, and I feel like you develop that that instinct, that athletic drive from a young age. Mm-hmm. Like if you're never an athlete, and all of a sudden you pick up CrossFit in your 30s, and you think you're gonna be a master's athlete, and you're gonna destroy everybody, probably doubtful because you haven't developed certain like mental strengths, yeah. and you haven't prepared your body over your entire lifetime to be an athlete, yeah. right? And when you get to that bar, like today's workout, it was it was a fun little workout. But when I got to the bar at the fourth round, and I'm like, I don't want to lift this shit. <laughs> I was like, I'm like, this sucks. I'm like, <laughs> so it takes a, s- a special person to push through that, like, yeah. suck. You know what I mean? It does. And the mental game is honestly the hardest part. And it's something that I've really been focusing on. And uh, this past week, being in Montreal, I, like, here... At home, I don't have that push. I don't have anybody to yell at me and be like, no, you're not going to stop. You're going to go, go, go. But when I was there, I did. And we were doing sled pushes, really fucking heavy sled pushes. And um, I went to stop about 10 meters away from my end point. And I had three coaches on me, like white on rice. They're like, you don't fucking stop the sled (laughs) push. Go. And I'm like, oh, (laughs) shit. And I finished it. But if I didn't have them there... I would have stopped for yeah. like 15, 20, maybe even 30 seconds because my legs were gone. Everything hurts. Everything sled, hurts. Heavy sled pushes is probably the only thing that makes you want to throw up. It does. I've and never I, actually puked during a workout. I have. <laughs> Several times. But honestly, like like the, the sled pushes, it's the only thing that has gotten me really, really close. Yeah. It's just bad. They're, they're deathly, but you know what? They work. They are a yeah. major conditioner. And they do. They make you dig down to that pain cave. And push through. Yeah, but we we love sleds at N six. We have we have like four sleds going. We have a big back. Yeah, we push a lot of sleds. I wish we love could. it. We only have two, but yeah. we utilize them as best as we can. Yeah, it's yeah. it's good though. Yeah, um, so what are we talking about? Women in CrossFit. Women in CrossFit. <laughs> yes. yes, if people like we really and again, this is why we tell people all the time. They come in and they're like, "Well, where are your mirrors?" Well, we don't have mirrors because I, yeah, we want you to get used to, you know 
feeling how your body moves and getting used to, you know, learning the movements through, um, what, what am I trying to say? You're just, you're just trying to learn the movements properly through your own body mechanics. You're not walking down the street or going to the bathroom watching yourself sit down and learn how to squat yeah. to go to the bathroom, you know? I, and people don't, don't get that. No. My members still complain that we don't have mirrors. Yeah. My wife, she, she still wants me to get a mirror. She's like, you should see Adam, Adam's gym. Adam had a squat rack with a mirror. We should get a small little mirror. No, like, no we're not getting mirror. mirrors. <laughs> Learn to move properly. <laughs> we, I don't want my members being coaches. Yeah. I want to coach them. So if we get a mirror... Everyone's going to be their own coach. Yeah. And that's what we want to avoid because people think they know what they should look like, but they really don't for the most part. Right. The other thing, too, that I notice big time is like I take a lot of photos of my members and I put them all over Facebook and I always catch their pain face. I always catch them when they're like dying on the floor (laughs) and then they get pissed. But if they knew they look like that, they'd stop. Because they think, yeah. oh, well, I look stupid. Who the fuck cares what you look like? You're doing a workout. The only people, the only, the only one that's judging them is themselves. No exactly. one's actually even looking at them. And actually, when you see someone doing stuff like that, everyone's like, oh, that's badass. So You're pushing yourself. Yeah, I took yeah. a picture the other day of a lady at our gym. I showed you the, the girl with the abs and yeah. the, the, the lady, she's, she's in her 40s, four kids. And she's so happy. She's like, by the end of the year, my goal is to have abs. Yeah, and she's she's got, she's got crazy abs. <laughs> Holy crap. She's actually studying to be a holistic nutritionist, that's too. Awesome. So she eats really well. But she comes to the gym like five, six days a week, and she goes hard. Sometimes too hard. Sometimes we got to tell her to dial down a bit, and she's she's slowly learning how to how to recover and listen to her body better. So she's more mature now in terms of her uh, as an athlete. Um, but she had the craziest face on her eyes were closed, and she's just in so much pain. It was like the last <laughs> round of a twenty minute arm wrap with heavy ass deadlifts. So, um, the, the 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 her comment was like, "Oh, I hate my stupid face." Like my you know, and everyone else is like, "You're amazing. You're inspirational. You're a badass." And People, people appreciate that. People like that. They don't, they don't judge you. They don't care about your face. Yeah. No, you never care. And, and that's actually something that I love about these gyms, like you, that you don't have the mirrors, that you don't have people judging you. And, like, so many people will come in, and I have had a couple women be like, well, you know, I look stupid, or I don't want people looking at me. I'm going to go to the back of the class. And I'm like, no, first of all, you're going to come to the front of the class, and you're going to yeah. work on that confidence. Because you have every right to be a confident person in what you're doing. You're badass. Yeah. You're here. You're throwing down. You're doing the same thing everyone else is doing. Who yeah. cares if you have to modify shit? Yeah. Everyone has to modify at some point. Like I'm right. modifying stuff right now because of my shoulder. Yep. Who cares? I'm yeah. working up to a certain thing. Yeah. You know? And that's, unfortunately, people still don't get that all the time where it's, you know, we don't care about your appearance here. We care yeah. about your performance. Appearance is just something that is a huge perk of CrossFit. Yeah. You end up getting a better body than you probably would have ever expected because of how hard you push because you don't limit yourself anymore and you have yeah. coaches who push you past your limits. Yeah, I love that. Like that that's that's what that's what we're all about too. I I, li- I like the whole approach of like forget the scale, get fit, perform well, and then you'll you'll look good naked after. <laughs> Pretty much. But yeah. you don't have to worry about what you look like. Like right now, I'm like a good 10 pounds overweight. But uh, I don't really care about being 10 pounds overweight because I'm getting strong as shit. My gymnastics are getting even better now than when I was lighter. So I can't wait till my conditioning session comes in. My coach is programming some crazy conditioning things starting August. Yeah. I'm a little scared. A lot of running and stuff. Uh, but yeah. when I when I start shredding uh, and I start like cutting down and going back to my regular weight, which is about 205, 210. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's like a good 15, 20 pounds uh, lighter. Yeah. Uh, that's like my ult- optimal weight. Man, I'm going to do handstand push-ups like you. Just strict <laughs> you handstand push-ups. Arms for those handstand push-ups. <laughs> <laughs> we did handstand, handstand push-ups today. And I think Ashley did 10 quick strict push-ups. I, for, for the time, it took me to do three <laughs> kipping <laughs> handstand push-ups. My arms are very short. Comes in handy. Yeah, so the, the whole thing is like, I think everyone who starts working out fitness, they do it because they want to look good. And, and that's yeah. that's the God honest truth. No one works out because they want to get strong or because they want to perform better or whatever. It, it's it's bullshit. People yeah. want to work out because they want to look better. They want to lose weight. They want to get more muscular, whatever, right? Because people are vain. We're all vain at the, at the end of the day. Um, but when you do start CrossFit, you fall in love with the performance aspect of it. And if you can get people to buy into that and they can start performing well, their body changes without them knowing, like overnight. They don't pay attention to it. So I had two members put a, like a testimonial picture up, 
and they look unbelievable. Yeah. I'd even rec- I didn't I, I didn't even realize how much they've changed because their their performance has like gone through the roof and that's what I that's what I'm concerned about. Mm-hmm. But their bodies actually change drastically. And I see them every day so I can't yeah. really associate uh, looking at the before and after picture I was like holy shit. Yeah. They look really good. The one, uh, the one guy that keeps peeking his head out and you know laughing at us over there. Yeah. Uh, Duke he actually sent over his two month progress photos and again because we see them every day we're we just think oh yeah you're doing good yeah. holy shit it was like night and day difference and yeah. even from you know day one to now complete and utter difference and like strength wise endurance wise um his appearance and he started doing you know his own like calisthenics type stuff yeah and he's taking it to a whole new level you know making his own gym backyard and yeah those are right into those it. are the legit members i have yeah. a couple of those they they bought like their own like rogue barbell yes. and bumpers at home because they're weak and they want to get stronger. And like you know what, in a few months they've gotten shitload stronger because they need to do extra strength work on the side, right? Um, but yeah, that's another thing. Like coming to CrossFit and doing CrossFit class is not going to get you to look like that. There's no way. If you do CrossFit class, you cannot look as jacked as Ashley. You cannot. You can't even perform close to that. And I found that the hard way. People who come to CrossFit, they're like, I want to compete. Yeah. I'm like, if you want to compete, dude, you, you need to spend time on skills. You need to get strong. You need to lift weights. You need to do way more med cons. CrossFit is great for general physical preparedness, yes. but it's not going to get you. Like, going to a regular CrossFit class once a day is not going to get you uh, into competition shape. Not right? necessarily. I think for some people it might, but it's also exactly what you put into the workout, I, yeah. I think. Because we have some people here who, um, you know, they've gone into scaled competitions. And, like, even Shelby yeah. coming with you to the Battle of the Boxes. Yeah. Um, coming to regular classes and stuff like that for an extended period of time gets them the basics. Yeah. Right. But it's not going to take them to that next level. If they push themselves, like, hypothetically speaking, they look at a workout and it's, um, you know, four rounds, 400 meter run. 10 handstand push-ups, 10 push-ups, yeah, yeah. and 10 power cleans, right? Yeah. Whatever the RX weight is, you know, if that if that's starting to get really light for them, maybe yeah. take it up a notch. You yeah. know, maybe move those handstand push-ups and pull-ups just to strict or to butterfly or mm-hmm. to chest to bar if those are your weaknesses and the power yeah, yeah. cleans, you know, up that weight a little bit. Maybe, I'll get you saying. So if you yeah. you could still scale up for members that are getting better exactly. to prepare them for competition. Exactly. That makes sense. Yeah, and that's cool. The other thing, too, is like for some of our guys here, every now and then they'll be like, you know, I really suck at this. I need to improve on that. Mm-hmm. We'll change their warm up a little bit. Yeah. You know, and make it a strength versus weakness warm up. Like mm-hmm. a, for example, in every minute on the minute, let's say their strengths are pull ups and their weakness is handstand push ups. Yeah. Give them, you know, eight strict chest to bar pull ups because that's a strength. They can bump it up a notch. And give them five handstand push-ups, no kipping, just strict. Yeah. You know, back and forth, back and forth for ten minutes, just so that they get a little bit of extra work. Yeah. Rather than just sticking to a conventional warm-up, you know, amp it up a little bit for yeah. them. Because we do run a competition class here. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's starting back up in September, and a lot of people can't make it. You know, it's once a day, four days a week, and the time might not work for you know parents or yeah. people who have nine to five jobs. It doesn't really sure. work for them. So what are they supposed to do? Just never compete, right? Yeah. No, I think I think what I meant was like you're not going to go to regionals. Oh, <laughs> or, no, no. <laughs> or no. like not like doing local competitions. I, I whatever you said about like scaling up for people, yeah. I totally agree. Like 100% agree. Like yeah. I'll even change if I know someone's strong, I'll even take away a strength session and make them do gymnastic stuff in terms of strength for for a couple like a, a couple of weeks of th- uh, thrown through a cycle of that. Yeah. That makes so much sense. But if you want to get like, if you want to be like hardcore CrossFit athlete. Yeah, you need a lot of extra time. You need a lot of time. I was just um, talking to somebody last night about it and I think I'm, I'm very busy most of the time. And, you know, my coach just put in for me extra uh, rehab and mobility and it increased my workout time by almost an hour a day. Wow. Um, so I come in and I do usually minimum 30 minutes. I'd say on average 45 minutes of mobility and rehab before my workout, every single workout. Then I get into it, do what I need to do, and I'll usually spend, it depends on the day, but you know, 10 or 15 minutes cooling down, doing some more rehab and mobility. Um, but that changes, you know, some people can come in and get an hour and a half done. I'm here for usually two and a half to three hours, wow. again, depending on the day. And it's a lot of commitment to that. And yeah. you and I were talking about it earlier where, 
you know, you have to learn how to, where can you get sleep in? Yeah. You know, for me, I had to, like I said, turn on some sort of mindless, mind-numbing TV show just to shut yeah. my brain off so that I could sleep at night. Otherwise, I'm looking at maybe four hours of sleep because yeah. I can't turn my brain off. I'm just like, okay, what do I, what do I need to do? What is my day like tomorrow? Yeah, I, I, I went through that. I think a, a few weeks back, I was like waking up at like 4 o'clock in the morning. And then I, I'm not a good morning person. Like I usually yeah, just sleep in and not get out of bed. But I was waking up at, at like 3, 4 o'clock in the morning and I was just wide awake. And, yeah. and just thinking about like the business and the gym and like the kids and everything else, right? And I was like, I can't turn it off. Yeah. And I was trying to keep my eyes closed, but I just couldn't turn it off. So for a while, I didn't even know why it happened. It's just really weird. Yeah, so. it's the same. Like until, until I figured out a, a good... Uh, strategy to try and yeah. put myself to sleep. Also, melatonin. I try not to, I don't want to rely on anything like that, but I'll yeah. usually take like half a tab of melatonin if I really need to. Yeah. And that at least knocks me out. But that has to be on days that I don't have to get up in the morning or I'm a yeah. zombie. I feel I'll, like I'll do some cocoon. I yeah, like the Progenx cocoon. Yeah. If I had a, uh, like a tough day and I feel like, if I had a tough training day especially, and at night I still feel stressed out because mm-hmm. I got to do a million things the next day, I'll take some cocoon and I'll, I'll, I'll sleep pretty good. Like that, I, I usually do that like four times a month yeah. because that stuff gets expensive. Unless Very. Projects wants to sponsor Snatches and Scotch. Woo. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I got, I got uh, the Progenic stuff. Uh, Kevin and I did a partner workout at uh, Solid Ground yeah. in Markham. And uh, we got first place. Woohoo. Oh, that's right. The, the Toronto, the GTA, GTA thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But one of the prizes was the Progenix. Uh, wow, that's a nice stuff. prize. And I still have it because I'm like so. It takes forever. You you can yeah. you can it lasts a long time. As long as you use it wisely. Like yeah. Like, oh, screw it. Use it every night. No, nah, yeah. I I am pretty. I use it sparingly. I don't. Um, I'm pretty good with using it. Uh, you know what else I like a lot? Um, uh, ZMA. I don't know if you heard of ZMA. No. Uh, it's just zinc, magnesium, uh, and B12. B12 helps helps your body absorb magnesium. Basically, take a good magnesium supplement before you go to bed. It's like my nighttime routine, so I, I, I sleep thing. really well. Yeah. Take a good magnesium supplement. Zinc, magnesium, and B12. It's just a combination that helps your body absorb the magnesium really, really well. And the first time I took that, I had some weird dreams, dude. <laughs> I had a dream I was working out with Rich Froning in his garage. And, like, that's, no, like, I think legit. That's a dream we've all had. No, like, I, I usually don't dream about stuff like this. I, I honestly, I, I don't even dream all that much. Like, but... The first time I took it, I remember this vividly. And uh, even, like, the guys from Barbell Shrug, they're, they're uh, I'm on one of their coaching programs. So I was working. It was me, Rich Froning, and the big guy from Barbell Shrug, Baba Buddha. And we're deadlifting with chains and shit. And I was like, I was like, yeah, and I was keeping up with them. And I woke up, I'm like, what I'm the hell just happened? <laughs> so I got my phone. I was, tweeting, I was tweeting the Barbell Shrug guys. And I was like, yo, I just had a dream that I was lifting in the garage. You took some ZMA. They're all laughing at me, but... Yeah, no, it's, that that stuff works. So that I, I definitely get good quality, better quality sleep when I when I take my magnesium at night. I usually do the same uh, right before bed. I take my fish oils and my magnesium. Yeah. Um, I have about six different digestive diseases. I'm all sort oh, wow. of screwed up inside. So the magnesium is like the number one thing that if I don't take it, yeah, I wake up and I feel like shit. And my body's all out of whack. Well, like magnesium, I think, is responsible for like 900 gene expressions Mm -hmm. or something like that. So, like, if you're not taking magnesium, like, you're screwed. (laughs) Thanks, John. (laughs) See ya. (laughs) Nice motorcycle. He's wheeling his motorcycle away. He's so so nice. He's not starting it next to the mics. (laughs) There it is. That sounds pretty cool. But, yeah, there's, you know, again, going back to, like, recovery and stuff that we were talking about. if, If you're not recovering properly... You cannot expect to push hard more yeah. than a couple days a week, if that. And that's what also leads to injuries. Yeah. And that's something I really had to learn the hard way. Yeah. Um, I just thought, you know, push, push, push. And, you know, you had to show up every day. You had to keep going. You had to keep pushing. And I screwed myself. Yeah. You know, I hurt my back. I hurt my shoulder. And now I'm paying for it. But it, it, as horrible as it is to say, and I know a lot of people don't have to do it, but for me, I find that those injuries were a blessing in disguise because I like they that really stopped me. They made me, you know, get my shit together and realize, okay, you're being an idiot. You're they made you really smarter. Stupid. Exactly. Yeah. So now, bye. See you, Kev. Um, <laughs> yeah. 
And yeah, now it's like I focus so much more on a recovery, but yeah. also, you know, learning the perfect mechanics and, and the maintenance, all the stuff you yeah. need to maintain. Yeah, exactly. So like the, the rehab stuff that he has, yeah. like Karim has me doing beforehand. If I didn't do it. Yeah. I would feel like a bag of shit. Yeah. I wouldn't be moving properly. I, I feel like I need to go to Montreal and like talk to Karim. They're awesome. <laughs> yeah, and I need to talk Rock, to this guy. Um, who's on Pro One. Yeah. Uh, Prato. He's he's at the games right now. Nice. Uh, he helped me big time because uh, on the Sunday last weekend, uh, we had a few of our friends from Solid Ground come down and we had like a three and a half hour training day. It was I saw awesome. that. It you beat so the hell fun. out of them. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. <laughs> but I, my shoulder, I caught a snatch really, really funny. Yeah. It wasn't a heavy snatch or anything like that, but I just caught it funny. And right away, I felt my shoulder again. I'm like, fuck. Yeah. So again, I, you know, the next workout we had for the day had toes to bar in it. I'm like, there's no point. It's just a workout. Yeah. I'm going to do sit-ups. Yeah. You know, double the reps, perfectly fine. No problem. So I just didn't do anything else with my shoulder, but sleeping on it and then spending seven hours in the car with my arm like this. Yeah. I got there in Montreal and I was like, my shoulder is fucked. I, you know, I didn't think that the snatching on Sunday was that big of a deal, but apparently it was. Yeah. So Rock and Karim, they worked on it for me and it felt a million times better within like an hour. Wow. And they showed me everything that I can do on my own. You yeah. know, because people are always quick to be like, go to a physio. Get yeah. Physio. It's like you can do that shit by yourself. No offense to physiotherapists, but the majority of stuff. Mm hmm. You can do it here. Yeah, I mean, like, I like going to, like, the Cairo for, like, uh, active release therapy. Yes. And then maybe for some acupuncture. That stuff is awesome. Uh, my, f my 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 shoulder uh, actually fro it froze up. Like, it, it just had no mobility and it hurt in a certain position. I played softball for the first time in my life ever. And I, I, I struck out in softball. <laughs> <laughs> and my shoulder the next day felt it. I was so embarrassed. <laughs> Because I got up there, I'm like, I'm going to smash this ball. I'm a I, crossfitter. I'm going to kill it. I struck out. Um, yeah. And then my, I actually felt it the next morning. My shoulder just killed. And it was my the good one, too. Yeah. This one I had problems with. And um, in the past, like, eight months, it's I could say it's about 100% now. Like, I'm, I'm pressing more than ever before. I'm catching snatches. So I feel really good. Yeah. But that acupuncture really helped me just open up that range of motion. Mm -hmm. So for that, I'd say definitely go to chiropractors. Uh, and then while you're there, they, they're going to give you things to work on yeah. as well. So keep a journal of your of your rehab. Of course. And just do that shit. Like You can always ask any, absolutely. any physio, can you give me a handout? Yeah. I should be able to give you a handout absolutely. with pictures and descriptions. Absolutely. We have a couple of videos um, on our YouTube channel of like, you know, just basic shoulder maintenance, shoulder mobility, yeah. stuff like that for people to do at home. We give members bands uh, and they do stuff like that at home by themselves. Um, and we had this, conver had this conversation in uh, two podcasts ago with um, uh, Adam Wade. Yeah. He, we were saying like you know why why do we see CrossFitters getting injured so much? And we talked about you know not listening to their coach and being overzealous and mm -hmm. and not and not being mature athletes. But a big part of it was that there isn't enough emphasis put on um, on maintenance and prehab in CrossFit. There's like rehab and there's like warm up, but there's no prehab. So like your coach is doing an amazing job with all the prehab he's giving you, and that sounds like you're going to be an athlete for a very long time i'm hoping <laughs> but but most most people don't do this they don't and, and when i used to do strength and conditioning back in the day i used to follow a guy named eric cressy and he had a ton of stuff so my workout like you said my work my work my warm-up was about 30 minutes mm -hmm. and it was a ton of shoulder stability uh, mobility thoracic spine mobility stuff before i even started lifting yeah and it was boring as shit but i, my, I was like you know if i'm gonna listen to this coach i'm gonna do exactly what he tells me to do so by listening to him got me really healthy exactly right strong as well but i got really healthy so i noticed um like i started with karim uh beginning of june so it's been about seven weeks now six or seven weeks um, and he had me doing a lot of this stuff because he knew my injuries. He knew my, he knew my past. Yeah. Um, so he had me starting with this type of rehab stuff right from the get go. So, I mean, nice. you know, catching, catching that snatch last Sunday was just happened to be a shitty movement in the middle of a, yeah. a hard wad. It happens. But at the same time, my shoulder, even though it, it got screwed up on Sunday, it has never felt better since I injured it. Yeah which is great. And same with my back, you know, I screwed my back 
trying to be a superstar on heavy deadlifts last year, a yeah. year ago this week. Mm-hmm. And I pulled something in my back and I couldn't walk for seven weeks. Holy crap. Um, Adam Wade, he was helping me with that as well. I would yeah. go see him once a month and he would adjust me and work on it and, you know, give me some stuff to do as well. But um, again, getting that injury was something that made me click and go, okay, you have to really buckle yeah. down and focus on perfect movement, not being an idiot and thinking, yeah. oh, I'm strong. I can lift this. No problem. You know? Yeah. And um, for the first time since then, when I was in Montreal, uh, Karim, again, helped me with my deadlift because I've been terrified to lift heavy uh, since last year, basically. Yeah. I haven't lifted anything over like 215 on a deadlift for a year pretty much except for best of the best where i pr'd nice that day but that was really stupid because i hurt my back again again huh. stupid um but well it depends it depends like if you have a little bit of a tweak in the workout and and you have a previous injury that you kind of tweak it's not really bad per se um like your shoulder catching mm-hmm. a snatch it happens it, the only time that kind of happens to people i think is when they lose focus and they're in that intense uh, wad and and they and again they, they they lose focus of their body awareness exactly. um and usually it's not too bad like usually it's a tweak and it goes away in a couple of days mm-hmm. uh, especially if you're doing your prehab and, and all that stuff yeah. um and and and, you, and th- that's going to happen your whole life like if you're going to push it's going to happen but um the fact of like listening to your body and saying you know what I'm not feeling it today i'm not going to do toast to bar and I, w- I, w- I was in that situation. For some reason, I was like, my, my shoulder's feeling wonky. And I've had this feeling before. And I pushed through it and it felt okay. And then the next day, it felt mangled. Exactly. So I'm going to do GHDs or I'm going to do something else. And it's not the end of the world because I want to work out tomorrow. Exactly. <laughs> right? Yeah. So don't kill yourself today. Train smart. Uh, and then in competition, you could decide to take those risks and yeah. see if they're worth the reward. Right? Yeah. But And learning how to recover faster, like... A year ago, if I had to hurt my shoulder the way that I did on last Sunday, I would have panicked. They'd yeah. Like, Fuck. What am I going to do for the next three weeks? I'm screwed. Yeah. But knowing that I have the proper tools and I know what to do now, I'm fine. Like, I could I could go in there right now and do chest to bar and yeah. chest to bar and snatch, and I'd be perfectly fine. I yeah. won't because I know that yep. I need some more time. But And that's smart that because you're not going to get better at chest to bar, toast to bar for doing it for an extra week. No. Like, yeah, you know I mean, it's not... Like you're already good at toes and chest to bar. You just need to improve your your speed and conditioning. So exactly. and your strength. So have it'll transfer into toes to bar anyway. Mm-hmm. That's what people don't understand. They're like, if I want to get better at toes to bar, I got to do a million toes bars. No, no. you got to improve your strength and your conditioning, yeah. and then your toes to bar will get better as a result. Exactly. Right? I haven't pressed overhead in months, and I PR on all my presses last yeah. week by a lot. And all I was doing is improving my strength, my overall strength. Yeah. And the thing that's improved the most is my squat, which helped my my overhead pressing yeah. even my strict press went up was crazy um but but i like that like i also think that when you look at injuries as a blessing besides being a more mature and smarter athlete i think it's also it's a blessing because you get to go away from the things that you like to do because usually we injure things that we're good at mm-hmm. so like if i'm really good at you know doing heavy squat cleans i'm probably going to injure myself at squat cleans because i'm i'm focusing on that so much yeah. and then that kind of forces us to step away and say you know what maybe i should work on my weakness like maybe yeah. i should work on handstand push-ups or maybe i should work on you know some kind of progression um on a gymnastic skill that i really suck at you know like handstand yeah. walking for me, <laughs> <laughs> me too. so so like that's how i feel um it, as it being a blessing like when i hurt my shoulder really really bad everything got stronger my mm-hmm. pull-ups got stronger because i was doing weighted super na- uh, pronated grip pull-ups um so i was really, I, I was there was no pressure on my shoulder i was doing um a lot of deadlifts a lot of squats and i started doing a lot of single leg work which also improved my strength and stability so like i wouldn't i wouldn't have done stuff like that if i had my arms yeah i would exactly. i just want to push heavy shit overhead every day because it feels so good for yeah. some reason like whenever i get something heavy overhead i just feel really good because you feel strong yeah it's like me with squatting yeah you know, when in doubt squat yeah and when i squat and you know i hit a pr or i do a lot of weight i feel fantastic yeah I don't need to be squatting the way that I squat every day. Yeah. I need to be working on, like you were saying, running or rowing. Yeah, or can, you whatever. could always do that. Yeah, because I suck at those. Yeah, so same. Same here. I, I hate running. I just, suck at running run I just suck at running because I'm lazy. I, I probably should be better at running. I was actually like, 
in high school, I was like the senior MVP in track. I was, like, I was a sprinter, though. Okay. So I can sprint fast. I was always a power athlete, but get me to run like 800 meters and longer. Yeah. I'm just like, oh, shit. Same. I can sprint like, you yeah. know, 100 meters, which isn't. Yeah. 200 bad. meters. I did the one and two, and I did the 400 meter in high school. Yeah. And I almost felt like dying after the 400 <laughs> meters. It was like, it was like 58 minutes of, of like death. 50 seconds of death, sorry. Yeah. So it's just brutal. So coming back to the, the to the discussion we had earlier with women in CrossFit, do you think that it's ever going to change? I mean, CrossFit's making a small dent uh, in like what society deems, you know, women to, to, to be, uh, what society deems to be beautiful. Um, like I look at my wife right now. My wife has always been beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> You're the best. Uh, but but, but she's, she's had two kids. She's always always very tiny, mm-hmm. um, and she's like wiry strong. You know those wiry strong yeah. people where she's like super skinny but like like freaky strong. Yeah. Um, so and she was always good at running. Um, always had buckled knees, right? So she never she didn't have good running form. She just mm-hmm. liked to run because she was so light. Um, but when she started CrossFit, and she started CrossFit because it was in our garage, so it was so convenient. Yeah. And she started CrossFit. I think when her son was four weeks old, her second oh, wow. kid. Yeah. For you. Shit. Yeah, and and this was this is 16 months ago. Uh, she couldn't she could she could do pull ups with the green band probably, and she was like a hundred and I want to say I don't want to offend her. 15, 10, 10, 110 pounds. <laughs> I don't know. I think she's like 110 pounds or 115 pounds. I'm not really sure. And she weighs now. She weighs more than she's ever weighed before. But when she wears shorts, she has little quads. Yeah. And she has, like, nice calves. And before, she'd walk around like this. Now she's got, like, really nice collarbones, shoulders. And she's, like, her back is nice and straight. And it's not even, like, she looks amazing. Like, she looks better now than she's ever looked in her life in terms of her body, her physique. Yeah. Um, she's got, like, little abs. It's crazy. But her the way she moves and her functionality is just unreal. Yeah. Right? And and she was getting bigger. And for her, she's like, I'm getting, I'm, I'm so heavy. She's weighing herself. Like, stop weighing yourself. You look great. Mm-hmm. Right? And she kind of slowly got away from weighing herself and and worrying about looking big she's not big at all she's really skinny still but <laughs> but but uh but even her even like, even her like her mentality was like oh, i can't gain weight mm-hmm. because women need to lose weight they're all about losing weight right um but i don't know what i personally think like right now you see so many things like dove is all about you know women uh women's empowerment and yeah you're beautiful on the inside and the out and all that kind of stuff so I think with the help of these exterior companies like Dove, uh, who are trying to promote uh, that everybody is beautiful, right? And that realistically, our biggest enemy is ourself. And that if you can start to love yourself first, as cheesy as it sounds, because everybody says it, it's fucking true. Yeah. It's so true because it doesn't matter what the next 15 people think about you. They could think you're perfect and you still think yeah. that you look like shit for Absolutely. whatever reason. And like, um, a little, a little bit personal here, but I don't really care cause I'm pretty open, but, um, <laughs> my, like I was married and yeah. my ex was incredibly negative towards, uh, a, the fitness modeling. That was when yeah. a friend of mine was like, you should try this. You'd be, you, you would do good. Blah, yeah. blah. So I decided to do it. She encouraged me, whatever. And he was so against it. And he's like, this is embarrassing. Why would you do this? You know, you don't look good. Why do you think what? you look good? All this kind of stuff. And, you know, him and his family were like, you are not allowed to put our last name on this because it's an embarrassment to the family. And wow. right away, I'm like, well, should I be embarrassed? Like, do I look horrible? Da, da, da. And it was just a really negative experience. And I ended up getting second place, yeah. which I was pumped about. That's and awesome. they were like, yeah, whatever. And I'm like, okay, well, was that really, you know... That, did I suck? Do I look terrible? And from that point on, it was just like this mental thing in my head because he was constantly like, you know, don't wear shorts. If we went to the beach, you'd be like, cover up and all that kind of stuff. I'm thinking, okay, am I, should I not have confidence because I look a certain way? So yeah. from that point on, like I didn't wear shorts. I didn't wear shorts until about a year and a half ago till probably regionals. When I went what? to regionals, I refused to wear shorts because I really? hated my legs. I thought they were hideous. I'm like, <laughs> they're fucking cellulite and they're, my ass is too big and everything. Yeah. I hated it. And, you know, I had a hard time wearing dresses because mm-hmm. I've had it. I've had many times, including my uncle, who's a dick for saying it, but I know it's just who he is. <laughs> but like three weeks ago, he's like, what? You're fat. 
Are you on steroids? You look like you're on steroids. You need to lose weight. This CrossFit thing, like, you look too big and bulky. I'm like, yeah. do you even lift? Like, shut up. Come on now. <laughs> but seriously. I'll pick like, you up and throw you. Exactly. I can squat you three times. <laughs> but, yeah, it's just it, these outside um, influences, and sometimes there's certain people in our life, like I was telling you earlier, without saying any names, we have a few girls here who, yeah. unfortunately, they have such negative uh, people in their life that don't understand that it's not just about appearances. Yeah. It's about feeling strong and feeling powerful and feeling confident. And that's why when you come here, that's what you get. The shitty part is, is when they leave outside of these doors and that safety zone is kind of gone. Yeah. People don't get that. You know, people don't understand. Like I was out uh, early last week uh, before I went to Montreal and overheard a girl say, that girl's got to be on steroids. Yeah. And I felt like saying, do you have any fucking idea what I do every day? Yeah. Do you have any idea how hard I work, not for what I look like, but for what I can do? You have yeah. no idea. But people don't get that. No. You know? The other th- side of that coin is one of my best friends um, is a very, very skinny girl. Yeah. And she's stunning. She's beautiful. But she's got a lot of uh, self-reflection issues because she's so skinny. And there was a lady that we used to work together. And there was a lady who was a larger woman. And she was always like, you're so skinny. And finally, one day, my friend turned around and was like, you're so fat. And it was like, oh, oh, my God, why? But it's the yeah. same fucking thing. And yeah. it's every once in a while, I feel like saying that to people when they're like, oh, you're, you know, you're so thick. You're so muscular. Oh, well, you're so fat and lazy. Yeah. How does that feel? Yeah. You obviously work hard on sitting on your ass, and I work hard on getting <laughs> offline. Yeah. You know, how would people feel if that's the response that was given back, or that's what people just came out and said? But I feel like I feel like that's <laughs> that'd be cool if you could say that. But why I, can't we? I don't know. Really? Why can't I don't know. we? You know, but I, I think get offended. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I, I think I feel like it's okay for people to be fat and have McDonald's every day. Like, I I, I I'm a teacher full time, so I teach kids. Um, 13 year olds and there are kids who are like the fat kids in the school mm-hmm. and they know they're the fat kids and they get mad that kids make fun of them for being fat but they eat McDonald's every freaking day yeah. their parents all well, it might not be their fault I don't know if it is but their parents bring them McDonald's literally every day either Pizza Nova or McDonald's and that's all they eat and you're right like whose fault is that yeah. kids at that age if that's what they've been used to their whole entire life that's right Unfortunately, they're they're predisposed to their environment, right? Yeah. And if the parents are, sorry to say it, but too fucking lazy to think yeah. of the health of their kids, what like unfortunately, what can you do about those kids? You and don't and for most people, it's like they feel so bad about like being shitty and eating shitty and looking like shit. Because let's be honest, if you don't look good when you wake up out of bed, like I don't wear a shirt when I sleep. I, I sleep in my underwear personal <laughs> but i've always done that my whole life um so when i get out of bed in the morning i go to the bathroom there's a big mirror and i, I look at my body and i'm like hell yeah i look good today <laughs> right but but <laughs> but before crossfit if i if i if i got to the mirror and i was like dude it's the morning and i don't have morning abs yeah. i look fat what the <laughs> freak is going on so See how I didn't swear there? Yeah. That, that was for Sorry. the... That was, I keep swearing. Sorry. No, no, no. You can swear. But that's, that's for the wife. <laughs> um, so so I feel like when people when people look at themselves negatively and, and are very self-conscious, because everyone, everyone's self-conscious, um, they, they project that on every single person they see. And when someone looks better than them, they, they hate that yeah. because they can't have the same thing. So I know that before, uh, we see people who, who, who are on, on a fitness journey and when they get fit and they look good uh, and they finally feel good, you see them walking differently. Their heads up, their chins up, their shoulders are back. They're, they're nice and upright. When they walk into a crowd or a mall, they're just like walking. Um, like even before, when I was younger, I'd walk into a mall and I didn't want to make eye contact with people because I was very insecure. Um, and, and now that I'm like more athletic and I feel strong, I don't even know what it is. I'll walk into a crowd, I'll walk into a mall, I'll walk into a party, talk to anybody. Because I don't give a shit, bro. I probably squat more than you. Same. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. So the fact that I feel stronger in the gym has actually made me way more confident in life. And I can talk to whoever I want. And mom tells me that people are intimidated by me. I'm like, why? I'm such a nice guy. Yeah. And she's like, well, you're big. And like, you're like, you know, you you talk to everybody. And like, you look at them. Like, well, no, you're supposed to do to people. <laughs> well, most people don't want to do that. You yeah. talk to them. They're like, uh, hey. Yeah. 
Yeah. Who are you? <laughs> exactly. Because all of a sudden, you've turned into the person who used to intimidate you. Yeah. Right? And now you're the one with confidence. And those other people that, that don't have that yet, I say yet because they will, they kind of have that hesitation of, oh, shit. You know, they feel like they're not as good or whatever, which is never the case. But again, like you, you said, when you would go into a mall or a crowd or something, you kind of had your head down. Yeah. Because we're still where they're at. Yeah, they have that's right. To get there, but yeah. I feel like I feel like CrossFit gets them there though. Like I feel like oh, yeah. the stronger they get, the better they they're, they're going to be. Like I used to be, like shit scared of public speaking, mm-hmm. like really scared. And now you're here. And now I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> and I also teach for a living, and talk in front yeah, of people sure. all the time. So, um, yeah. So I mean, you know, that's that's where it's at. So, um, any anything else you want to talk about? Uh, I don't know. I think we touched questions? on some pretty good. <laughs> oh, I don't know, we just had some pretty good topics. Um, anything you want to plug in? Like uh, promote your coach, your sponsors, well, my anybody? Coach, yeah. Karim uh, from Pro One, he's fucking awesome. You yeah. can find him on Facebook too. Now, is he like a? Um, does he have like a um, like a physio background or what? Because he sounds like he does a lot of like that prehab stuff. Like, does he have any? Yes, kinesiology. Oh, he's a kinesiology yeah. background. His, uh, okay. His actual company for programming is called RX Lab. Oh, okay, yeah. that, that's what you guys have been hashtagging yes. the whole time. Rx, yeah. what is that? Just that's the name of like his his thing. Yeah. Oh, cool. You know, like uh, before it was under Hyperfit, it was just Hyperfit. Oh, so he USA. was a Hyperfit guy. No, no, I, I followed Hyperfit. Oh, you did. Before. Okay. Yeah. Um, but it was Hyperfit USA, which yeah, it's the name of his gym. But Karim is Rx Lab. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Cool. Nice. Um. Other than that, I'm going to the Granite Games. In oh yeah. September. I heard about that. Uh, which is awesome. I'm terrified out of my mind, but it's going to be a lot of fun. That's uh, right. So Actually, if you, when is it? In September? September 12th to the 14th. The Friday, so Saturday, if you, Sunday. if you're on Facebook or if you have internet connections, <laughs> and you're probably <laughs> listening to this, uh, make sure you sponsor Ashley for the Granite Games. Even if it's like 10, 20 bucks, throw her yes, uh, some cash for the game. She qualified for the Granite Games. Get her there. Do it up. Where can they do that? Uh, you can go on to my Facebook uh, or my Instagram. It's on there. So uh, Ashley Smith on Facebook? Yeah, Ashley Smith. Uh, my email, because there's about 10 billion Ashley Smiths out yeah. there, uh, is a underscore smith23 at hotmail.com. And uh, my Instagram and Twitter, I think, are a <laughs> underscore smith2323. I'm not 100% sure what they are, but I think that's what it is. <laughs> She's uh, a Michael Jordan wannabe. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fuck. I loved Michael Jordan. Yeah. I Same. wasn't a basketball player. I tried to be, but I'm a little short, <laughs> and slow with running, but I love Michael yeah. Jordan. So, yes, 23 has always been my number. Yeah. Ever since I was little, I actually still have my elementary school basketball jersey with really? 23 on it. Yeah. Nice. From W.E. Brown. Oh, <laughs> little hick school. But, yeah, <laughs> love it. Cool. Anything else? So, uh, Coach Kareem, 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 Kareem. Coach Kareem is awesome. Yeah. Uh, uh, try some Fit Aid. I just had some actually. Fit it's pretty Aid good. It's fucking awesome. It's so good. It is so. If you good. like energy drinks, I'm not a big fan of any energy it's not drinks. An energy drink though. I know, but it kind of tastes like it an energy like drink. Ish. A mixture of Red Bull and Mountain Dew. Yeah. But with less carbonation, it's like very lightly carbonated. But it's refreshing. It's, uh, it's nice. Very refreshing. I like yeah. it. I actually, gonna, I might buy some from you before I go. Absolutely. Um, it's fantastic. And then Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Uh, sponsor her for the Granite Games if you can. Uh, and that's basically it, right? That's it. If you're in the St. Catharines area, always feel free to stop in at CrossFit St. Catharines. They're very friendly here. We really are. And there's always Nova to welcome you. Yeah. Golden Retriever, who's the best. <laughs> Um, also, uh, this is episode number five. Uh, if you like our episodes, go to uh, iTunes, give us a five-star review. Uh, check out Snatches and Scotch on YouTube. Also, follow us on Instagram and our Facebook page for the video version. This is the first video podcast we're doing. Woo! Pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> the, last one was a, the last one was a big fail. <laughs> the camera shut off halfway and we're like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, so hopefully this one works out. We've got a much better camera. Um, for the video version, go to www.snatchesandscotch.com. That should be up by next week. Maybe? It's still not up yet, but it's being finalized. Uh, and that's basically it. Thank you very much for even asking me to be a part of this. Oh, whatever. You're the best. NBD, not a bad day. 
not <laughs> no big deal in my world. Just thought I'd put that out there. <laughs> All right. Peace out.